Okay, so we have seen how, given a periodic function uh, of which is reasonable, you know, it's a reasonable periodic function. Uh, it's possible to write it as a Fourier series, right? So we first started with functions with period two pi and wrote it in terms of cosines and sines, and then we relaxed this need for the period to be two pi. We said, okay, an arbitrary period can still be, you know. Uh, there's a descaling that one can do and still uh, some function with an arbitrary period can be expanded in terms of sines and cosines, right? So the whole prescription has been laid out. So a natural question which appears is what happens if your function is non-periodic, right? Is there some notion of, you know, which is similar, which uh, like that of Fourier series which can be generalized for a non-periodic function, right? So which is the subject matter of this lecture. Okay, so in fact, two natural questions appear, right? Once we have are familiar with family, for, Fourier series, one of them is whether there is a meaningful notion of Fourier series or something like that for a non-periodic function. And the other is, you know, we saw that there is a discrete set of frequencies. We are expanding our uh, periodic function as a sum over a discrete but infinite set of frequencies, right? But now the question is, is there some scenario in which this sum will become an integral, meaning that the frequencies allowed would uh, would be continuous in nature, right? So it's a continuous infinity and not just a discrete infinity. Right? It turns out that both these questions are related, right? And, and their answers are basically the same. And so that's the notion of the Fourier transform, right? So we'll describe how you know, if you take a, a limit in an appropriate way, the Fourier sum will become a, an integral, which is which goes by the name of a Fourier transform. Right. So let's start by recalling how, if you have a periodic function with period 2L, it can be expanded as a summation over n c n e to the i n pi x over L, where these coefficients c n are written down as these integrals 1 over 2L integral minus L to L f of x e to the minus i n pi x by L dx right so when this sum is generalized to an integral we have you know a, a, um, the definitions are modified like here so f of x is now a sum right so the coefficients are now become a function g of alpha so uh, this n is gone so in place of n pi over l you have an alpha and alpha takes all possible values from minus infinity to plus infinity you know, all continuous values, real values from minus infinity to plus infinity, and you have g of alpha, e to the i alpha x d alpha. And then g of alpha is, you know, also, uh, it, it now runs from, uh, so the integral runs from minus infinity to plus infinity, right? So earlier we had a, an integral which was restricted to some interval minus l to l, right? So because it has a period to l, and all the information contained in the function was given within this, uh, interval, but now that interval has to go all the way from minus infinity to plus infinity, and then you will see how you get this factor of one over two pi, f of x e to the minus alpha x comes in, and then dx. Right? Okay. So let's see how you know these the generalization of this this series to Fourier transform happens. Right. So basically, what we will do is take the limit l tending to infinity. Right. So that's what is going on here. Right, so let's carry out this procedure in a systematic way. So we start with a finite L and then we redefine n pi by L as alpha n. Right, so this n index n is still there. So it's just a relabeling exercise at this point. And so then we uh, you know, denote alpha n plus 1 minus alpha n, which is pi by L, as delta alpha. Right, so you, know, you can see that if you're going to be taking L to infinity, this delta alpha will go to this uh, you know, differential element d d alpha. So now let us write down c n in terms of an integral. So so now you have c n is delta alpha over two pi, right? So in, in place of one over two l. So now you see where this two pi is coming from, right? You sort of see right now, but you'll see in a moment in detail. Minus l to l f of x e to the minus i alpha n x dx. So next we plug in this expression for cn back into 
this ex summation expression for f of x. So f of x becomes summation over n going from minus infinity to plus infinity. You have this e to the i n pi x over l. Then in place of c n we have delta alpha divided by 2 pi minus l to l f of u e to the minus i alpha n u d, d u. So we have f of x is equal to summation over n delta alpha over 2 pi integral minus l to l f of u right so we bring in this uh, this factor exponential i to the i, I times n pi x over l in here and then we join these two and then we just have e to the i alpha n x minus u right so here of course we have identified n pi by l as just uh, alpha n so now we have this expression for f of x where there is a sum and an integral and so thus we you know we can rewrite the same thing as summation over n delta alpha divided by 2 pi and there is a function of alpha n right so we already see that this is when you are going to take this limit del delta alpha to become arbitrarily small so this summation is going to become an integral so where alpha f of alpha n is also given right so f of alpha n is this integral minus l to l f of u e to the i alpha n times x minus u du so now we take this limit uh, l tends to in infinity so this summation will just become an integral right so in, in place of f of alpha n you just write it as f of alpha and then you get a d alpha comes in because you have delta alpha right so 1 over 2 pi of course remains as it is and now what is f of alpha right so let's look at what f of alpha is now f of alpha has also become uh, you know an integral going from minus infinity to plus infinity f of u uh, and alpha n should be called alpha because alpha takes all this all continuous values now and so the definitions of uh, the Fourier transform inverse Fourier transform everything follows immediately right so but we have to just you know uh, identify these quantities properly so in order to do this let us define g of alpha is 1 over 2 pi times f of alpha times e to the minus i alpha x. So then we see that you have you know 1 over uh, 2 pi is here and then f of alpha is here right so in, in place of um, f of alpha you, you plug in um, um, you know so this integral and then this this factor basically you know cancels one of these factors and then you are just left with integral minus infinity to plus infinity f of u times e to the minus i alpha u du right so u is a dummy variable right so it's uh, it's convenient to use u here and new is getting integrated out and then there's also this overall factor of 1 over 2 pi so which is really the same as the definition for g of alpha that we have used right except that in place of x so here we had Mm, f of x and you know e to the minus i alpha x dx but here we have u in place of that so it doesn't matter whether you, you integrate over u or whether you integrate over x as long as you are consistent with the way you're doing it so g of alpha is called the Fourier transform of this function f of x where f of x itself is written in terms of this Fourier coefficients right if you wish you can think of g, this g of alpha as Fourier coefficient but actually it's called a Fourier transform right and now it's an integral and it runs from minus infinity to plus infinity and g of alpha times e to the i alpha x d alpha right so this is the idea of Fourier transform which is a generalization of the notion of a Fourier series that's all for this lecture thank you